It's GED question of the daytime, and look at this. We've got another word problem. Let's take a look here. It says a square has a perimeter of 57 inches. What is the area of the square? So let's think about this. Um, two important things to do whenever you've been given a word problem is to think about the information that you're looking for. Where are you going? Uh, what are they asking you to find or to do? In this problem, we can see that they've asked us to find the area of a square. It says, what is the area of the square? This is what we're finding. The second important thing to ask yourself is, what have I been given? What information do I know? And I only have one piece of information this time. Um, one number, if you will. I know the square's perimeter. It says a square has a perimeter of 57 inches. A perimeter of 57 inches. So I'm starting with the area of the square. The number of little square units it would take to cover up a shape. I'm sorry, that's not what I'm starting with. That's what I'm looking for. Okay, I'm looking for this, the number of squares to cover this uh, bigger square, the number of square units, okay? Uh, but what I know right now is the perimeter, the distance around the outside of a square. So I know the perimeter and I'm looking to find the area, okay? Now, great news is that um, if you're look, ever looking to find the area, um, the GED formula sheet has area formulas on it, and it has um, a few shapes on there. Back over to our sheet here, we know to find the area, we would need to plug into this formula, A equals S squared. Sounds simple enough, but here's where a ton of students go wrong. So don't do this. This would be the wrong way to do it. Students just go, oh, I'm going to find the area by plugging in whatever number I see, and I'll square it because the formula says so. And you would be a uh, making a foolish mistake if you did this because this area formula is only going to work if you plug in S. S stands for side length. We don't know S. We don't know the side length of this formula. What do we know? We know the perimeter. We've learned the perimeter is 57 inches. So don't panic. It's not like there's nothing we can do. Um, we actually have a great tool at our disposal, and that is the perimeter formula. We also know the perimeter formula. So what I'm going to do here is instead of uh, using this formula right now, uh, I can't use this until I know S, the side length. Okay, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the perimeter formula of a square. Uh, take a look, and you'll be... So, uh, the perimeter of a square formula said P equals... Let's get in a good color so you know I'm not uh, making a mistake. P equals 4S. Now, what do we know? We do know the perimeter. Per perimeter is 57, and so I write the 57 right under the P, and that's equal to... 4s. And now I'll be able to solve for s. Uh, this is just a one-step algebraic equation. Um, I want to get this s alone. Currently this s is multiplying with 4, so I'll do the opposite. The opposite of multiply is divide. The rule of algebra is you can do whatever you want, literally whatever you want to an equation as long as you do it to both sides. And so I'll divide that other side by 4 as well to keep my balance. So on this side, 4 divided by 4 cancels. I'm left with just S alone, and 57 divided by 4 is, I should be able to do this in my head, but it's been a long day, y'all, 14.25, 14 and a quarter. And so now, now that I know what S is, now I can plug into the area formula. So now my area isn't some mystery of S squared, the S is 14.25, and I'm going to square that. And squaring just means multiplying by itself, but there is an X squared button in your calculator. You can just hit it right now with this number still in your calculator and hit that X squared button. And as soon as you do, you'll see this number. The area equals 203.0625. Oof, I do not have enough room to write this. Let me write it big down here. Area is equal to 203.0625. Now, 
let's talk rounding. This is what's known as a terminating decimal. It comes to an end by itself. It doesn't go on and on forever. It's not um, an irrational. It is a terminating decimal. And so um, the deal is that I do not necessarily have to round. So what you should do is you should look for some indication about whether or not you should round. So I go back through my problem. There's no rounding directions. It doesn't say to the nearest tenth of an inch to the nearest hundredth of an inch to the nearest inch. I don't see any language like that. And it's not a multiple choice problem, so um, I don't have any clues from that. And so without lack of clues, I am just going to leave this terminating decimal the way it is. I'm not going to choose to round it like I would if it was a num decimal number that went on and on. So I'm going to leave it just like this. I do need a unit though. This is 203 what? Well. Uh, this is 203. This is an area. Area is always measured in square units. And so this is 203 square inches. And the way mathematicians abbreviate square inches, because they're too lazy to spell the word square, is by putting a little floating 2. We call that exponent the se uh, second power. We often call it square for short. Uh, we put that little floating 2 on top of the inch. And now this says 203.0625 square inches. And that is my final answer. We're done. If you have any questions about this, be sure to drop them in the comments.